Welcome to our brand new tailor shop. It's on the second floor of the officer's barracks here at Fort Ticonderoga. And in our last buttonhole video, I promised that we would do a subsequent video about long work corded buttonholes. On fashionable garments, the buttonholes tend to be somewhere between two and a half to three times longer than the button itself. But yeah, it means you're doing some really long buttonholes. Check this out, there's some easy ways to make them go pretty well, and it's going to produce a much better garment in the long run. In building our garment, we've got our two coat fronts, our right side, which has got the buttons, our left side, which is going to get the buttonholes. And you'll notice here we've got our cloth-covered buttons. These are an inch and a quarter wide, so they're very fashionable for the 1770s, which means the buttonholes here are actually over three inches long. Now the whole buttonhole is not three inches long, at least the opening. The only an inch and a half of it is going to be open. The rest of it was referred to as closed work. Now there's some techniques to actually do this, which we'll get to in a minute. The cording is, or gimp thread, we actually lay in beforehand. So we lay out where our buttons are going to be, and then we lay out where our buttonholes are going to be, lining up at the front edge, exactly where the buttons are, and at the back edge, three inches back. In this case, we start out parallel to the waistline at the bottom, and we remain parallel to that first buttonhole, even as we work our way up the curved front of the coat. Now here, I've used, for a gimp thread, a very heavy-duty linen thread. And what that's going to do, it's going to serve to pop the buttonhole stitches themselves up as we stitch the buttonhole in place. So to do really good decorative as well as functional buttonholes, we're not even going to do them once the lining's in place. We're going to do them just at the point that we have the, the outer body material and the interfacing set in place. So that as we're stitching, we only have to worry about these two. And we'll actually set the lining in after that. Now, with my threads all in my excuse me, my cording all set in place, now we're set to just like on any buttonhole, actually cut these open. So I want to line up the buttonhole chisel right in between my two gimp threads. Take my mallet, cut, and for these particular buttons, I know that they are pretty darn wide. They are inch and a quarter buttons, so I'm actually going to cut an inch and a half's worth of opening. And now I'm going to go ahead and get started on actually stitching these. So, as we're doing our buttonhole stitch, it's the same as doing an uncorded buttonhole, except with each one of our stitches, we want to catch that cording inside. Each time I make a buttonhole stitch, I'm sort of doing a counterclockwise lasso that I'm going to stitch up through, and I want to start my first stitch just before that cord, so I can get that row of curl stitches established before I'm actually trying to catch the cord in place. Now I'm going to scoop through my interfacing, my outer wall, and going around my core. So pull that tight, and as you're first starting out, this gimp thread is going to work its way around. Just, just don't worry about, worry about the fact that you're going to have to fight with it a little bit just to keep centering it just behind the edge of that cut for the buttonhole. Cording actually makes this a little bit easier. Cording is very forgiving stuff in that it just makes the purl stitches on top of the buttonhole so much more prominent that you don't have to be super close together on your stitches to make a decent looking buttonhole. What you really want to put your effort into is making sure that you're stitching very, very close to the edge. And if you're doing that and pulling up with even light tension, those knots are going to start to lay in really nice and straight. And as I get to the end of the hole, all that happens is I switch to just catching the top of the outer fashionable material and wrapping around the cord. So there's the last stitch that's going through the open work. And now I'm going to switch to just catching the top. And so it's basically the same width as it was here. And it's still going to center that cording or gimp thread right underneath that. So I'm coming right to the end of the buttonhole, and you can see the, the cording or gimp thread is almost covered up. 
can put one more stitch over that. And I'm going to do one more stitch just past that to sort of seal that in. And the effect is, even though they're obviously very distinct colors, the gimp thread and the actual buttonhole twist, it ends up being that you really can't see that gimp thread underneath. Pull that last stitch taut. And then on these, I like to just pull a needle right through just past the end of that, sort of in line with where those purl stitches have gone. And I'm going to come up just next to it. And I'm going to do my bar tack closes both the, the front and the, the inside of that buttonhole. And just like on any buttonhole, you only need, really need two or three loops just like this. I'm going to rotate it and stitch over the top of that. So I've just finished off my bar tack and now I'm going to pull the thread down through the garment right at the edge and come right back up more or less in line with where I want the second row of gimp thread to end up, not necessarily where it is. I'm going to rotate it around and I've started again just a little bit before it starts, the, the gimp thread that is, and now I'm going to start my buttonhole stitching again and going back is a lot easier because you have for a guide as far as what's a straight line that first row of stitching. So your real goal is just to be parallel to that. And then once you get your way all the way to the end of the open work, you're going to do another bar tack. And uh, voila, you'll end up with something like that. So you're probably saying to yourself, Stuart, this is all well and good as far as doing a buttonhole itself, but what am I going to do about the line? Well, here's a really neat period trick to deal with that. This is probably my favorite way to deal with the line. What I've got here are actually just squares or rectangles cut out of scraps of the lining. You can see i got a stack right here. And I turn one edge of it. Just go ahead and press it. I take that and I lay it. You can see where I've already done a bunch. I lay it right up next to where the buttonhole is going to be. And I'm going to fell stitch it down. So I scoop through, catching the edge of the old square, the first square I did, coming up through the new one I'm putting in place and going right through a little bit of the interfacing. And I keep repeating that process till I get right to the buttonhole itself. And now, scoop down through, actually, and I hope you guys can see it, catching the buttonhole stitches themselves on the inside. Now as I, I stitch along, coming towards the front edge of the buttonhole, and when I get to the front edge of the buttonhole, I'm going to do exactly what I did on the back edge of the buttonhole. I'm going to tran transition towards stitching towards the other piece of lining. Once I get to the front edge, I'm going to turn it under so that it's about an eighth of an inch away from the front edge of the garment. And then I'm going to either baste it in place to stitch it down later, or, as I've done with the others, I'm going to do an underhand stitch to secure it in place. Once I get to the top here, well, then I'm just going to turn the top edge to line up with the bottom of the next buttonhole, and then fell it down just like I did here, and then repeat that process till I'm all the way up the front of the garment. So, I've set all of the squares of lining in place. Now I'm ready to set the actual rest of the lining in place, and to do that, um, got it basted in place, at least temporarily, and to accommodate these squares, I'm going to do, flip it around, and I'm going to make a cut diagonally from the front edge, so that I can turn it, and then turn the lining line up with those squares along the front. Just like that. Of course I'll, I'll press it and I'll, I'll stitch it down. When I stitch it down I'm actually going to stitch it not right along the edge, actually back here and then I'll press this fold down. You probably at the top and bottom can put in a bar tack to keep this flap that you're going to create from flopping up and down. 
So I, I want to thank you folks for tuning in to check out another cool button hole technique. I just want to let you know we really enjoy your feedback, whether it's questions or comments, like I can't see a darn thing. So please let us know. Let us know what you're thinking. Let us know what other techniques you want to learn about. So thank you again.